Hi, my name is Andrew. Today, I'm here to talk a little bit about some MCAT tips and tricks that I used to score a 130 on my MCAT, which is the 98th percentile. A little bit about me. English was not my first language. English was never my strongest subject throughout school. I definitely struggled the most on cars throughout my MCAT studying. And so I don't wanna make it seem like I was scoring really well and not this 130 because I was doing it well the whole time. I think it's a really big learning process for everybody. When I was studying for the MCAT, I struggled a lot on timing and accuracy for the car section. I really didn't know where I was going with it. Everybody on Reddit's telling you to do Jack Weston. Some people are throwing you a new world, right? I think sometimes it can be kind of daunting on where to start. And so hopefully this video can cover some of those topics. And so without further ado, let's get started. The first tip I would like to give on cars is to focus on the main idea of the subject at hand. If you're reading through a passage and you really don't understand what a specific sentence or maybe a word within that passage says, try your best to read that sentence or that phrase and just move on. Sometimes the phrase or sentence that you just read doesn't even pertain to the main idea of the passage. And sometimes it's really hard to understand what sentences or what phrases are important to the overall main idea of the passage that you're reading until you finish the whole thing. Of course, if you're struggling to read every single paragraph, then it may be a little bit hard to understand the main idea in general, but I feel like sometimes we get really caught up in the small nitty gritty of the car's passage that keeps us from learning about the main idea or the bigger picture of the passage. Next up, another good tip I have is to highlight keywords or phrases. And so if you do find that the author brings up, let's say a thesis statement, some really important words that say in contrast or in conclusion or in summary, you might wanna refer back to that as you're answering the questions down the line on the passage. And a shortcut for this is to use the keys Alt and H uh, so hold those two keys together during your exam on the passage on where you want to highlight. And so the highlight tool can be a really great way to focus in on specific words and phrases that you might want to refer back to. Another thing about highlighting though is you definitely don't want to be highlighting every single sentence. Like I said, you want to highlight the important things or the things that really stick out to you as you're reading that may pertain to the author's point of view. However, if you highlight everything, then you can kind of get lost because the whole page is just a sea of yellow. For tip number three, I would highly suggest reading the passage first and then answering the questions. I know everybody's got different ways. However, in my opinion, I believe the best way is to get a full understanding of what the passage is saying at first and then trying to tackle the questions. Some of the time, the questions are trying to throw you off or they're phrased in specific ways that you might be confused or some of the answer choices might be trying to lead you astray if you didn't fully read the passage or fully comprehend what the main idea of the passage was yet. And so I found it to be most successful when I read the passage in its entirety had a solid foundation of what the passage was saying, and then went back to the questions and answered them one at a time. For the fourth tip, I would highly suggest you focusing on timing after you focus on accuracy. I believe this is important because it's really impossible to get better at answering double AMC style of questions and getting better at reading hard to understand passages unless you give yourself enough time to work on accuracy first and then slowly crunch down the amount of time that you give yourself. A suggestion for this is you could do 15 to 20 minutes per passage at first, or heck, even if you need 30 minutes for one passage, give yourself as much time as you need to answer the question while backing it up with evidence from the passage or using your best reading. Let's say you read the passage three times and you feel like you really got something right. Try to understand your thought process and the logic that you use to get that accuracy right before you focus on decreasing that time down. So this is important because the car section has 53 questions in 90 minutes and nine passages. And so that means you're answering around one passage in every 10 minutes. And so I've broken down the math a little bit so you can read that. However, it's really impossible to answer every single question in one minute accurately or reading the passage in three to four minutes unless you give yourself the ability to answer the questions correctly before you focus on timing first. For tip number five, this is something I don't see people talking about too often, but I would highly suggest doing targeted practice questions in cars. What I mean by this is, I know everybody talks about how Jack Weston is out there, you wrote practice questions, and a bunch of other random test banks. However, I would focus your attention 
in the beginning on things like Jack Weston or things like UWorld because all you want to do at that time is to bolster the amount of reading endurance you have, critical thinking abilities, those sorts of things. However, as you get closer to your test date, let's say one or two months before, I would highly suggest you switching over to mainly double AMC content. That includes the double AMC cars Q packs, double AMC full lengths, and cycling out of Jack Weston content and U World. This is because although they include really great resources and passages that most of the time do match the difficulty of double AMC passages, they can't mirror the exact format, reasoning, and style of question to the T that double AMC is doing it, right? Because they're the ones that are writing your MCAT. And so as you get closer to test date, I would highly suggest you focusing more on the official material rather than material that is just available online for you to purchase from a third party company. Another tip is I would highly suggest scheduling in rest days like you do for working out or when you're at the gym, right? And you need a rest day to give your muscles some time to recover. I believe that my cars and just reading stamina overall definitely needs a break sometimes. I love reading random passages about Da Vinci as much as the next man. However, I really need some time off for my brain to just recuperate. And so I know some people do, let's say, six day study plan uh, a week where they study for six days and then they rest one day. And then you can have that one rest day as a day where you don't touch cars at all. Or you can do, let's say, cars for three days straight and then take one day off, something like that, right? However, you want to give your brain some time away from cars because it's important to just let your brain rest a little bit before you just completely pound it with critical analysis every single day. This becomes even more important, especially the day or two before your real MCAT. You wanna go into the MCAT with a really fresh mind. Sometimes being cool, calm, cool, and collected goes a really long way for a really stressful test like the MCAT. And so I highly suggest, although studying for cars and learning how to read is really, really important, I think giving yourself the time and space to relax and calm down a little bit can actually help you a lot more in those high stress situations. As for some concluding thoughts, um, I believe that the MCAT car section is really hit or miss for some people when they first start studying. However, if I could do it when I first started, anybody really can. And I don't want anybody to feel discouraged when they first start out because from my experience, I got one out of sixes, two out of sixes, maybe a zero out of six here and there when I first started a lot of the time. And it can feel really, really bad, right? Everyone wants to do well in the MCAT. And so I wanna remind you, and anybody that's studying for the MCAT, that the MCAT studying journey is extremely long. Give yourself a little bit of grace when you're doing practice questions or practice exams. And it can be really hard to bounce back from one of those demoralizing passages. However, there's always a next day and then there's always more practice to come. So just try your best for every single passage that you do. Learn from your mistakes, look over why and how you miss certain things, and try to improve upon those every single time you take an additional passage or full length. If you found this video to be helpful, I would appreciate it if you leave a like and subscribe, or maybe a comment on the video. Um, I'm going to leave some information down in the description below, but I really appreciate you for clicking on this video and checking it out. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you in the next one.